Hello, it's only me. Do any of you follow an Aussie YouTuber called Bartwan? B A R T W O N. Uh, we've briefly discussed one of the situations that might um, explain what happened to Cleo Smith. And let's make the second one uh, something that Bartwan considers the top of his list. I'm not sure what I think about it, but yeah, there could be something to it. His idea is that Cleo was abducted by someone who actually knows Jake. Someone that works with Jake or maybe befriended him through his hobby of big game fishing and throughout all the camaraderie has learned about Jake's family and about Jake's stepdaughter Cleo and maybe as people do in these situations when they're making friends, becoming close, you know, you share things. So, you know, photos are shared. Hello, sweetie. What are you doing? You can get a bit behind me. So, come on. Let's go. I'm not sure if it's dementia as well. Um, have you got something in your foot, or what are you doing? What are you doing? It's mummy. It's your mummy. Just... Want to go that way? We're going this way. Something's up with him. We're walking this way. Maybe he wants to go and see his friend, the Aussie Shepherd over here. She's uh, quite the sweetie. But one idea is then okay that um, you know Jake has spoken about his little family spoken about Cleo someone's seen these images of this little she's like a little fairy isn't she Cleo is like a little fairy she is a very adorable looking child <laughs> and um, that one thinks that maybe Jake's talked about the camping trip specifically I mean I don't know how this guy finds their tent site I mean how much information is Jake telling this person you know was he followed there because you know the person would have had to find, found the tent Know, either been watching them arrive, seen the setup, waiting, you know, obviously not letting Jake see him, um, and then has taken this huge risk to abduct Cleo out of the te tent right from under Jake and Ellie's noses. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? I guess it's possible. And we know that the police will be going to Jake's place of work. They'll be making interviews there. They'll be talking to other industry sites and trying to find someone who might own a car or might have been at the campsite and leaving at this 3 a.m. time slot. Um, but maybe there's someone that 
has now missed several shifts over the last two weeks. Maybe there was someone who was at work the week prior to Cleo's disappearance who has just stopped coming in. You know, so maybe there will be that sort of data that um, investigators will be getting from uh, these various work sites, including from um, Jake you know, maybe there are people that own the type of sedan they're looking for and worse, yeah, who just have stopped coming into work. I mean, that is a big risk, isn't it, to take for a girl, you know, when you are working for a mining company earning good dollars. Maybe you've worked toward getting some really superb qualifications in a trade. It's a lot at stake for someone though, isn't it? To maybe have to move on and then find work um, explaining a sudden le leaving, not getting maybe a reference or something, you know. Um, and then this might become suspicious down the track that this is a person that, yeah, turned up they'd previously been at Carnarvon and here they are now. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not, sh not sure about uh, this idea. Because um, Bart one does think, look, yes, you know, people talk. I don't, I don't think maybe they say as much as... He, he believes, but yes, possibly, you know. Yeah, he's spoken about the camp trip that um, his family were taking. What do you guys reckon? Do you think um, it's likely that someone would have known about the trip, has followed them up, watched where they stayed, and then taken that risk to get Cleo out of the tent. Do you think... Do you think that... it's possible? Um, and what it makes me think of, you know... What's me in mind about the cases? Are the cases where you just think you just need these alibis broken? There's someone there that has got an alibi that... Um, can just, if only it could be smashed down by somebody stopping and think, oh, Rocky, here's your corgi friend. You know, stopping to think a little bit deeper about what someone told them on the date of, you know, uh, February 13th, with our phone bills, for example. He's all right. Cutest thing. <laughs> I guess that is, you know, a reasonable theory because it is such a, it's such a random event, um, such a remote place and yeah, it, it does beg the question now, um, what's going to come about out about, you know, someone that may be acting suspiciously that's in their circle you know that's in Jake's circle is Jake mute you know how Jake's barely said anything and he doesn't seem to have a lot of conviction when he's talking about um, you know no he didn't do anything no nothing no um, is it because he suspects someone and he's got this sort of burden of guilt but is he also then worried about speaking up about them because, you know, what if he's wrong sort of thing? I don't know. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I'll speak to you later.